You could sum up my 7740X review pretty much like this. But Intel's release of the X299 chipset and the LGA2066 socket was about much more than just a crappy 4-core mainstream chip haphazardly tacked onto a bigger PCB. There is real power here, and for now, the king of the hill is this CPU, the Skylake X i9-7900X. Let's just ignore KB Lake X for now. If you're thinking of going X299, the i5 and i7 processors that you can use with the new LGA 2066 socket shouldn't even be on your radar. But there is a reason that this platform is actually a worthy successor to the venerable but aging X99 chipset. For starters, as with most generational improvements, you're going to see significant performance increases at the same price tiers. Secondly, the chips with comparable core counts to Broadwell E are significantly cheaper this time around. And lastly, AMD's re-emergence as a significant player in both the mainstream and enthusiast markets seems to have kind of lit a fire under Intel's collective ass. Just this past January, Intel was content to push out Kaby Lake as a successor to Skylake with basically identical clock-for-clock -clock performance and just slightly higher frequencies. In the few months after this was seen as an acceptable product roadmap, AMD has gone Looney Tunes with new releases, and Intel is scrambling to recapture the public's interest. Consequently, they're being forced to release new processors ASAP, driving innovation forward along the way. The 7900X is, for now, the most powerful consumer CPU Intel has ever released. At $1,000, it's not for the thrifty, but with 10 cores and 20 threads, it replaces the outgoing 6950X from last year, which sold for a whopping $1,700. This has pushed down the pricing of the entire Intel product stack, as you can now get an 8-core for $600, previously $1,000, and so on. There are issues here, like the reduction of PCIe lanes on the 8-core variant from 40 to 28, and the need for a physical key for redundant RAID configurations. I mean, what in the world was Intel thinking here? Still though, this isn't a problem for the majority of consumers. 28 PCIe lanes will never be saturated by your average user, and I would venture to guess that RAID setups are less common than people imagine. What people want to see with a new processor generation is more cores, higher clock speeds, better IPC, and great overclocking. And the 7900X delivers on all four fronts. With a base frequency of 3.3 GHz, it looks unassuming enough, but Intel's Turbo Boost Max 3.0 can take select cores all the way up to 4.5 GHz in some tasks. Along with improvements in IPC for this generation, this translates into phenomenal single-threaded performance on par with the i7-7700K. If you're more of a content producer than a gamer, the 7900X cranks up the multi-threaded power with Cinebench scores more than 50% higher than Intel's previous $1,000 flagship, the 6900K. And if you start tinkering with some settings in the BIOS, the 7900X can hit some stunning overclocks, with my tester hitting all core stable at 4.6 GHz at only 1.2 volts. This doesn't come without a cost, however. The 7900X does produce a lot of heat, Although this is kind of to be expected from a CPU with this large of a die and drawing 140 plus watts. BIOS updates since release have somewhat tempered the issue of VRM overheating, and the latest BIOS of my ASRock X299 Gaming i9 had my 7900X running at 83C when overclocked and under load with a Corsair H110i. Now this is by no means cool in the grand scheme of things, but it's still well below where the chip will start throttling. Strap some sort of custom cooling loop to this puppy and you could easily see load temperatures in the low 70s, even at 4.6 gigahertz. It also pulls a lot of power from the wall, with my test bench peaking over 400 watts during heavy workloads while overclocked. In comparison, the 6900K only draws about 360 watts and my KB Lake bench only about 310, even with a full custom loop. So how does this jumble of numbers and specs translate to performance? Here are my testing results using a 4x8 gig kit of Crucial Ballistics Elite DDR4-3200 and a Founders Edition GTX 1080 at stock settings.
can see, not only does the 7900X keep pace with Intel's higher clocked 7740X in gaming tasks, where the four core chip should reign supreme, but it absolutely hammers the rest of the field in synthetic CPU tests and simulated render workloads. I have yet to see how it does in real world video encoding tasks, but perhaps we'll save some of that testing so that we can compare it to the newest challenger to the throne, the Ryzen Threadripper 1950X. Keep an eye out as I'll be releasing my review of the X399 platform and the absurd 16 core release from AMD in the very near future. Also, don't forget to hit that like button down there and get subscribed to the channel if you're not already. If you're watching this video before August 25th, also be sure to check out this video and enter the giveaway I'm doing with Fractal Design. As always guys, thanks for watching.